Well, today I have a little Sony FM AM solid state radio. This is the Sony 6F 19W with the original owner's manual. It's just a fold out pamphlet. Some specs, front page, main features, and some notes. Still has the original Sony radio warranty card. For a period of one year from the date of original consumer purchase, Sony will make all necessary repairs and parts replacements to the unit occasioned by defective workmanship and or materials. Well, I think it's out of the warranty because this unit was made in 1968 according to the research that I have done. If you were to have a problem with this radio, here is a list of the service centers that you can actually send it to. Look at that. I wonder if any of these places are still in business this day in 2020. If anybody sees this video and you know of a place that's still in service, go ahead and shoot me a comment and let me know. Anyhow, we'll flip through all these. You can look at all the different service locations that are available, including their phone numbers, some of them without even numbers, with letters. Look at that. Two blank pages on the back, Sony Corporation of America. Anyhow, this unit came in and the customer said that they just put a set of batteries in it and it did not operate. Now. I hear a little bit of audio, it's very distorted. Now, the arcade. now when I turned it off and back on it came back. That's all the way up. Absolutely nothing right there. A little bit of something way distorted in the background. Maybe it's just got some bad connections. Absolutely nothing. Either way. Maybe it's the power switch. Trying to laser? Well, let's go ahead and take the back off and at least take a look around inside and see what's in this thing. Look at that, still got the original Sony antenna. Take a look at the back of that. Sony Corporation, Tokyo, Japan. Well, let's go ahead and test the batteries before we go any farther. They are Duracell Rotten Top batteries, expiration March of 2030. We'll get the meter out here and we'll measure the battery voltage. Up inside there, there is the original serial number. Huh, okay, well let's go ahead and pop the back on it at least. Man, look at the way that thing is designed. They just don't make them like this anymore. Got an Onkyo speaker in it. Sony on the circuit board over here. Look at the size of that capacitor right there. What is that? 470 at 6.3 volts. That thing is huge. So I'm wondering if it's the power switch right here that might be having the problem. 4.3 volts, 4.4, it's pretty good. Should be about four and a half, actually closer to about 4.7, 4.8 for a fully charged battery. Let's go ahead and just switch it on. Complicated dragon tattoo. She told me I was a Chinese oh, it's working great now. Not 
Not working. Let's measure the voltage drop across the power switch. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got 1.8 volts drop across the power switch. It's congealing oh, in yeah. my throat. The best. Listen to this music. Like the corner, and you're going to see like Joe Pesci beating someone to death with a baseball bat. That's yeah. all I can think about. It's a song called Wildwood Days. Do you hear it? There, it's not working again. 3.2, 3.3 volts drop across the power switch. So I think I just need to clean those contacts. It's probably going to be as good as new, or as good as it could be for a 52-year-old radio. So the power switch just consists of this lever that makes contact right there. So I'm wondering, where is the voltage drop? Is it here? Yes, it is. The drop is in between the moving contact and the stationary contact. I get 3.8, 3.9 volts right there. No drop between the first stationary contact and the moving contact, but I see a 4 volt drop between the moving contact and the second stationary contact. That's it. The early Just needs to have those contacts cleaned. So I'll go ahead and spray some deoxidant here, but before I do that, I'm just going to scrape the contact a little bit. So now I'm on the ohm scale. Let's go ahead and switch it on. I have the batteries out at the moment. So I'll put it on the 600 ohm scale. Let's see what we get now. 0.5 ohms. Well, let's see, lead integrity is 0.4. So we have a tenth of an ohm drop across that right now. Let's open it and close it. Same thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot a little deoxid in there. We'll run the pot around a couple times. And I'll bet you it's going to be good as new. Try to get some down in the pot as well. Got a little terry cloth towel. I'm just going to try to sop up the excess. Okay, let's put the battery back in it. And we'll do one more voltage test. I'm back on voltage drop. Zero. Absolutely zero. No one. They're really soft. I'm out of class. Back next week. Nothing at all. Perfect. All right. Well, let's take a close look at this thing. The inside view. Look at that galvanized sheet metal that they use as a shield. There's the tuning circuit modular, high-tech back at the time, and then all the hand soldering on the circuit board. Once again, an Onkyo speaker, Sony on the top, Onkyo on the bottom. Interesting, were they, uh, were they a thing back then? I'm not sure. There's the headphone jack and just above it the DC jack. There's the AM loop stick antenna. Look how big that thing is for such a tiny radio. It's gigantic. Anyhow, let's go ahead and uh, button it back up. And I'm going to go ahead and shoot some deoxid back into the AM FM mode select switch. And this thing should be ready to go back to the customer to lead a long, prosperous life once again. Well, there, right down inside here, is the AM FM switch. So I'm just going to go ahead and shoot some deoxid into the corner of that. I'll work it back and forth a few times. All right, let's reassemble it and give it a final checkout. Okay, well, there it is, all back together. It's working great. Every time you turn it on, you get audio. So it was just the contact resistance and that power switch. That's all it was. 
So working excellent. Went ahead and gave it a quick cleaning. Look at that. Shined it up. Cleaned all the uh, chrome lettering on there. Cleaned the top. Cleaned the antenna. Put it back together the right way. It wasn't snapped together correctly in the back whatsoever. But anyhow, look at that chrome. Except for some fingerprints I put on it. Looks really, really good. Hopefully this customer will get many more years out of this radio. Uh, I wish they made these things today. I would go out and buy one right now. Anyhow, I certainly want to give a sincere thank you to those who have supported my channel with a donation via PayPal or by having me repair your unit like this one. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and liking this video. It really helps my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos, at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Once again, everybody, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.